So our next step is to see if we can represent the input rep output rule in the form of an equation. An input output equation is a symbolic representation of an input output rule. Often you'll hear me say algebraic instead of symbolic, meaning the same thing in this case. So an input output equation is a symbolic representation of an input output rule. And you're gonna see the incredible power of having an input output equation is that the input output equation can represent all possible scenarios. When we write an input output table, it's very valuable. It tells you, for example, right here, if you've got a side length of seven yards, then you need 32 total pavers to do the job. However, for example, in this table, I don't have a row for 13, a side length of 13 yards, or a side length of 40 yards, or a side length of 107 yards. So there's so many possible scenarios that the table can't represent all of them. However, the symbolic equation can represent all the possible scenarios. To do this, we need to first represent our input and output quantities with variables. So I've already done this here. You notice for pool side length in yards, I let lowercase f s represent the pool side length in yards. So s could be 5, 6, 7, 8, 24, 13, 40, 107, any possible legitimate number for the side length of the pool. So s is our input variable. And our output variable, I chose to use capital T to represent that since it's the total number of pavers. Whenever you're defining the variables, you can choose whatever you want. Some of you may have used P here, for example, because it reminds you of the word paver. But T, the output variable, represents the total number of pavers needed to do the job when you have a pool with side length S. So T depends on S. Let's analyze this picture again to see if we can find the general relationship between T and S. Well, if you've got side length S, then that means S tiles would go on this side. S tiles would go on this side. S tiles would fit on this side, and S tiles would fit on this side. And then don't forget, you'd still need this one in the corner here, this one in the corner here, this one in the corner, and this one in the corner. So no matter what the side length is, you've got four of these S's. So the total number of pavers T is equal to, you've got four of the S's, four times S is four S, plus we need the additional four corner pieces. So plus four. So it shouldn't be terribly shocking that this plus four was here. Notice that when you went up by one, the number of pavers went up by four over here. So that is that four right there. But this input output equation is so much more valuable than saying add four to the previous output because I don't know what the number of pavers is for a pool of side length 107 yards without knowing the number of pavers for a pool of side length 106 and then 105 before that. So anytime you build off of the previous output, it's very limiting, whereas this, is not building off the previous output. Instead, it's telling you directly, what can I do to the input to get the corresponding output? And this is that rule. When the input is S, the output is 4S plus four. Let's see why this input-output equation is so valuable to us. How many pavers are needed to do each of the jobs with the following side lengths of square pools? So I don't need to add four to the previous size. I have this general rule, and these all are specific values of S. S 25 yards, S is 4 yards, S is 17 yards. So once I have the input-output rule in symbolic form, I can simply take this S value and plug it into the rule for S here, and then do the computation to get the value of T. So I've got T equals 4 times S in this case is 25 yards, then plus 4. We do 4 times 25 is 100, 100 plus 4 is 104. So if a pool has side length 25 yards, it will take 104 tiles to do the job. What if a pool had side length 4? Well, let's plug it into that formula for S, because that is a specific value of S. So I've got 4 times S, in this case we're putting 4 in place of S, plus 4. 4 times 4 is 16, plus an additional 4 is 20. So if I have a pool of side length 4 yards, a square pool that is, then the number of pavers needed to wrap the pool is 20. 
What if I had a pool of side length 17 yards? Well, then the number of pavers T would equal four times. In place of S, I've got 17 and then plus four. Four times 17 is 68. 68 plus four is 72. So if I had a pool of side length 17 yards, that's a square pool, of course, then the total number of pavers needed to do the job is 72. This input output rule is extremely valuable to the company pool pavers because all they need to know is that their customer has a square pool and given a specific side length, they can compute the total number of pavers they need to bring to the job by plugging in the side length of the pool into this input output rule right here. Let's now summarize what we've done so far and mention a couple of things that we will do soon as well. So we are studying input output rules to start this course. An input output rule is a relationship between two quantities. And that relationship can be represented in four different ways. The four different ways that we are concerned with in this class is a verbal representation, a numerical representation, a symbolic representation, and a graphical representation. So what have we done so far? This was one of our representations right here. This was a numerical representation. This is an input output table. So that's our numerical representation of the rule. This right here we did, this was our symbolic or algebraic representation of the rule. So the relationship between pool side length and total number of pavers, we represented it numerically and we represented it symbolically. We also wanna be able to represent them verbally and graphically. Graphically is coming soon. That will be in a, a future screencast. Verbally, we kind of have done, but not necessarily articulated. So let's do that right now. Ultimately, you may have noticed as we were drawing the pictures that the number of pavers was four more than the perimeter of the pool. The perimeter is the sum of the side lengths. And then it was four more because you needed those four corner pieces as well. So while we didn't explicitly state that, you may have been thinking this, that the number of pavers was four more than its perimeter. These are four different ways of representing the exact same rule. Again, this one, the graphical representation, we haven't seen it all yet, that is coming soon. Our objective is to approach input-output rules from four different perspectives. By understanding an input-output rule from four different perspectives, i.e., verbally, numerically, symbolically, and graphically, you have a much better understanding of the rule itself. Let's now look at another example. 